Another wonderful day, your laughter shall be full. Psalm 126 says, You shall have a full scale laughter, and your testimony shall make noise. People shall come from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south to celebrate the workings of God in your life. I pray that you continue to encounter God all the rest days of your life, and your mouth shall be filled with laughter. It is very, very important that it's the word of God that makes us. The word of God is God. The word of God is Jesus. Acts chapter 10 verse 44. He says in very clear terms, The Spirit came upon them that had Peter, not upon everyone, those that had the word. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. He said, While he yet spake to me, the Spirit entered me and stood me upon my feet and established me. So that is having an encounter with God. Having an encounter with the Word of God. Having an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Because it's the Holy Spirit that opens our eyes to the Word of God. That's the way it works. Psalm 119 verse 18. He said, Open down my eyes that I might see the glorious and wondrous things out of thy law. I pray that God will open your eyes to his Word. To have genuine encounters with him. It is absolutely important. In Luke chapter 24 verse 30 and verse 31. He says, Did our eyes not open our eyes opened when he gave us the bread and we took the bread and they were recovered they were restored they went back to Jerusalem they were going the wrong way but when they encountered God they encountered the word of God by his spirit they went back to their place of destiny so when you encounter God it is a time of assessing your inheritance and possessing them in God of assessing your redemptive color and dignity in God and possessing them. I pray you have genuine encounters with God and there is no encounter with God that does not have the ambience of his word and the Holy Spirit. That's the way it, it works. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 21, he says, and God appeared again. Again means multiple encounters, not just one. Appeared again in Shiloh by his word unto Samuel. Wow! I pray that that will be your experience. Acts chapter 10 verse 44. The Spirit came upon them that had Peter, that had him, that had the word of God. That's the way it works. In Luke chapter 21 verse 38, he said, Early in the morning, they gathered together to Jesus, number one, number two, to hear him, to hear the word. That is the most important thing. When you go to fellowships, what do you want? Where is these stories? When you go to the church, what do you want? When you listen to great programs like this, on target ones, what do you want? If your heart is to hear the word of God, God will open your eyes and you have definite encounters with him. And that is the way it is. He appeared again. We serve the again and again God. Psalm 126 verse 1, he says, when the Lord and again the captivity of Zion. He did it before, he's doing it again. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. So what he did yesterday, he can always do the same today and do them tomorrow. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, he says, I am God, I change not. I don't change. And I pray that today you will encounter God even in this program, and you'll encounter God, and you are going out and you are coming in, day in, day night. Psalm chapter 19, verse 2, he said, day unto day, utter it speech, night unto night, reveal it knowledge. Why? So that we can have direction in life. So I pray that as God begins to speak, that you hear him for yourself, that you don't hear him just to use it to mock other people, because that won't help you. Hear the word of God for yourself. Hear the word of God for your family, for your marriage, for your children, for your parents, for your siblings, for all that is around you, for your community, for your state, for your council, for your nation, and for the nations of the world. Because it's the word of God that changes us. He said, we looked unto him, 
and our faces were lightened. The word of God communicates the glory of God. The word of God is light. Psalm 119 verse 130 said, The entrance of the word of God communicates light unto us. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8, it says the word entered Jacob and it lighted up Israel. That's an encounter. I pray you have that genuine encounter today. That's the way it works and you will not make a pardonable mistake. You will encounter God today because it's the light that makes all the difference. Once you are lighted up, no darkness can comprehend you. John chapter 1 verse 5 says something very wonderful and glorious. The light shineth in darkness, and darkness cannot resist nor comprehend the light. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. And that is the way it is. I pray that you receive the word today like never before. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. He said, I sat, stand upon my watch to see what he would tell me. To see, see, see what he would tell me. That is for my eyes to be open to see. When you begin to see the word of God, not just hearing alone, then that is an encounter. That is an encounter. That's the way it works. John chapter 6 verse 63. He says, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The word of God communicates the spirit of God, communicates the life of God. And if you're able to see it, then you have a genuine encounter of a lifetime. It will end your lives of struggles in the area where you have encountered him. I pray that you have a thirst and a hunger to see and to hear the word of God beginning from today and to encounter God. It will give you phenomenal lifestyle that will surprise you, surprise your friends and shock your enemies. That's the way it works. I want you to pray, Lord, today I want to hear you and I want to see your word. Job chapter 42 verse 5, he says, I had you by the hearing of the year before, but now my eyes see it thee. That is, I have an encounter with you, and you see the result of the encounter, beginning from that place, until the Bible says, now, in verse 9, uh, Job was acceptable before God, and in verse 10, he prayed for his friends. An encounter led him to begin to do the right things, and then his own captivity was turned around. God restored everything. I want you to pray to God today, Lord, I want to see you. I want to have a genuine encounter with you, Lord. I want to see your word. 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 He said they looked unto him. Their faces were lightened and they were not ashamed. And that is the way it is. They looked unto him. Their faces were lightened and they were not ashamed. That's the way it is. Oh Lord, I want to see you. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. He says, Warabushotere, looking unto the perfect law of liberty. He said, we are changed. If we go with open faces, unveiled faces, we are changed from glory to glory, glory to glory, glory to glory, not glory to shame, no more. Praise God. I pray that today you begin to have an encounter with God, encounter with the word of God. He said, God appeared unto Samuel Ishilo again by his word. God is always appearing if you're ready for him. If you're ready, if you're prepared for it, you will not miss the appearance of God. It is preparation that is the mother of manifestation. When you prepare for it, when your heart is prepared for it, you will not miss it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to understand today that preparation is a major key in life. Preparation is a major key. Preparation means setting yourself, taking your position in the affairs of life. And remember, if you have not prepared, you have already prepared to fail. Remember, if you have not planned, you have already planned to fail. A planned life is a very wonderful thing to do. Because when you plan, especially you plan your day and have short, short goals, it helps you to have the satisfaction of fulfilling them. You have 24 hours in a day. When you plan the 24 hours, tacitly and then god can intervene can interrupt those plans but at least you have a plan you see when you now begin to fulfill them at the end of the day you have this joy at least you're able to fulfill something and then the short short goals will lead you into the long-term goal they'll be premised on eternal values that's the way it works i want you to know this number one fools are known by what they plan fools are the ones that don't plan 
A wise man says, the future comes on our ways to the full. And that is the reality. Why? Because of no plan. When you plan, the future does not come on our ways. You just simply see yourself walking in the light of the plan. And you must understand this. That's the way it works. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15. He said, the labor of the foolish disturbs other people. Why? Because they don't have any plan, no preparation. They, because they don't plan, they don't know how to get to the city. They don't know the how to, the plan. Planning is integral in the affairs of life. Luke chapter 14, verse 28. He said, who is it that wants to build a tower without first sitting down? To plan, to think, to strategically put things in place. To know whether he's able to finish it. Otherwise, when he starts, he stops. He becomes a mockery. And that is what is happening. We have a lot of projects people have started and they abandon because no proper planning, no proper spiritual planning, prayer. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. He said, Men ought to pray and not to faint. That's the way it works. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, Pray without season. So you have spiritual uh, preparation, you have mental preparation, mental labor, strategic thinking, sitting down to think. Luke chapter 14, verse 28. Then before the physical, that's why you see that. People that go into mental level, they are the managers of organizations and they are paid higher. Because if you go into physical level without the mental side, you will become a fool because you'll be beating about the bush, no direction. So preparation is key. Preparation is positioning yourself, making sure you are thoroughly positioned. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15 says, The battle is not your battle, is the Lord's. Then verse 17, the key. He says, set yourself, position yourself, prepare yourself, then you will see the salvation of the Lord. Today, preparation is key. When you have not prepared, you are prepared to fail. So in this first segment of the mystery of preparation, it is talking about positioning yourself Take your position. Set yourself. That's what Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles, chapter twenty, verse seventeen says. He said, "When you set yourself, then you can see the salvation of the Lord." It is only those that set themselves that can see the appearing of the Lord. It is only those that set themselves that can see the manifestations of God. You must make up your mind today to set yourself, to set yourself, set yourself, prepare. Prepare, prepare. Beloved, preparation starts in the heart. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1. He said, The preparation, the preparation is in the heart and is of the Lord. That's the way it works. So every preparation starts from within, not without. First of all, you have to think about your heart. That's why Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26 says, My son, give me your heart and let your eyes, let your eyes observe my ways. First is the heart. Preparation is of the heart. If you miss it from the heart, you miss it. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8, he said, They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 He said, guide your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the very issues of life. So preparation starts from the heart. And Messiah did all that was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. He lost out. Second Chronicles chapter 25 verse 2 So it starts from the heart. You must purify your heart. You must repent. You must give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want God to appear, you must not be separated from God. It is our sin that separates us from God. 
and it will make God not to hear us. That's the way it works. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2. Sin separates us from God. The only barrier between us and God is sin, and that's all. If you can repent and deal with that from your heart, then you're good to go. That's the most important thing. Repent. Make sure you're properly born again. Make sure your name is in the book of life. Make sure you are in the kingdom of light. Make sure you are in the family of God. Make sure you're seated in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers, at the right hand side of God with the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 and Ephesians chapter 1 verses 21 and 22. So understand verses 20 and 21. So it's important for us to get that clear. I pray you will not make any unpardonable mistakes. Today I want you to cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, I am preparing my heart for you. My heart is for you. My heart is set for you, O Lord. I don't want to make unpardonable mistakes. Lord, the preparation is of the heart and is of you. Lord, I'm preparing my heart for you, for this revival that you have brought to planet Earth. I don't want to be out of it. So I want you to listen today. There is great revival that is on planet Earth that has never been before. This great revival, you need to prepare yourself for it. You don't joke. It's not a guesswork. When you encounter God, it's a time of supernatural turnarounds. It's not a guesswork. You prepare for yourself for it. I pray that you will not make unpardonable mistakes. I pray that you will today set yourself and allow God to do what he wants to do. May God find you in your right position. And may God find you today at the right place, at the right time, doing the right things, meeting the right people and getting the right results in the name of Jesus. And I decree, on time anointing shall rest upon you, shall rest upon your family in the matchless name of Jesus. As I pray for you today, you shall not miss God's timing for your life. You shall not miss God's plans and purposes for this generation in the name of Jesus. No evil shall come near you. No plague shall come near your dwellings. In the matchless name of Jesus, you shall move forward by fire. In the matchless name of Jesus, receive the grace to prepare yourself. Receive the grace to be on target with God. Receive the grace to walk with God. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Receive the grace today to walk with God. In the matchless name of Jesus, I pray for you today. Rigadara Brababadea, every worker of iniquity, battling with your destiny, shall somersault and die. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for you today. Voices of your ancestors issuing evil instructions against you by the finger of God. I silence them today. In the name of Jesus, and every barricade formed against your shining. I break them down today. In the matchless name of Jesus, I pray for you today. Causes or being in the right place at the wrong time. I command them to break in the name of Jesus. Causes that has been making you to miss your right positioning in life. I break them today in the name of Jesus. I pray for you today that every power of Balaam hired to curse you, I silence them today in the name of Jesus. Regada Brobo Those that are going from shine to shine, put, spreading your name and your materials against you, I command evil consequences to backfire upon them in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you today. Every sacrifice offered or that will ever be offered to any idol against you, I command such to catch fire and die in the name of Jesus. I decree today any power of the cursing mouth raised or that will ever be raised against you, I command them to die in the name of Jesus. I decree visitors of darkness shall not come again in your dream in the name of jesus and any power projecting your spirit to unknown places i command them to die in the name of jesus and every evil power placed on top of your house i command them to fall down and die in the name of jesus every evil in place in your neighborhood in your habitation i command such to die today in the name of jesus spiritual serpents and spiritual scorpions blocking your way. I command them to perish today in the name of Jesus. I decree today, Regada Bosho Koto Brabaderia, every dark power pursuing you, 
by the finger of God, I command them to fall and die. In the name of Jesus, all their evil pursuers, I command them to stumble and die. In the name of Jesus, I decree today, your glory kept in the custody of any idol, I recover them by fire. I recover them by fire. In the name of Jesus, and every evil feet rushing after you, I command them to turn back and die. In the name of Jesus, I decree today that the strong man assigned to make your way and your life difficult, I command them to die today. In the name of Jesus, and every agenda to make you to suffer in old age, I command the agenda to scatter and die. And every agenda to turn your children against you, to use your children to punish you, to use anything and anyone close to you to punish you, I command that agenda to scatter and die. In the name of Jesus, I decree today, powers assigned to puncture the greatness of your children. I command those powers to die. In the name of Jesus, I decree restoration angels by the Spirit of the Most High God shall begin to locate you. In the name of Jesus, every glory killer, I kill you today. In the name of Jesus, anything buried to bury the glory of your destiny, I command those things to bury their owners in the name of Jesus, and I release the glory of your destiny to come alive. I pray for you today, every sickness assigned to overtake your life, to overtake your family, to overtake your family line. I command them to die today in the name of Jesus. And any power taking your case to ungodly places, I command them to die. And I command the ungodly places, confusion to come upon them and they destroy themselves completely in the name of Jesus. And every sacrifice offered or that will never be offered to any idol against your glory, I command them to scatter and die in the name of Jesus. Every satanic intelligence gathered against you to demote your destiny, to rubbish you, to waste your destiny. I command them to scatter and die in the name of Jesus. And every barricade formed against your progress, I break them into pieces in the name of Jesus. I decree polluted and dirty hands. I command them to get out of your life, out of your household, out of your family line out of your environment in the name of Jesus. I pray, voices from your foundation attacking your destiny. I command them to shut up and die in the name of Jesus. And any power that wants you to suffer at old age, I command them to scatter and die in the name of Jesus. And lastly, I pray for you today. Any power that wants you to be a burden to others, I command the powers to die in the name of Jesus. You are a contributor in their phase of life. You are not a problem or a burden to anyone in the name of Jesus. You are a resource person on earth. The hand of God upon you, the creative force inside of you, the core advantage God has put in your life shall begin to come alive now. And you become extremely relevant in their phase of life. You shall not be relegated to the junkyard. You shall not become history while you're still alive. You shall not expire while you're still alive. In the matchless name of Jesus, I pray today that they will not use that appellation concerning you to say he was, she was, talking about that you had a better yesterday. No, your today shall be greater than your yesterday. Your tomorrow shall be greater than your today. In the matchless name of Jesus. Remember, go prepare. Preparation starts from the heart. I will go further in the second segment. And you know that preparation is key. Remember, it is loving God. It is loving people. It is touching lives positively. And it is serving our God. I am fresh fire. We are missionaries on assignment to connect the whole world with his love and his presence. Thank you. Hello there. Are you worshiping with us for the first time? Congratulations. You are most welcome into this great gathering. This is no coincidence. We believe that your steps were ordered by God and he has a plan for you. 
you are now a candidate of God's revival. We are a generation called to worship the one true God. We do this in spirit and in truth, in kindness and in love, preaching and teaching the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here, your mind will be renewed as we connect you to God's presence, and you are now transformed into a giant of a strange order. Welcome home.